it's really a culture here in our school system. I think every school that you go into, I mean, it's not just about the security equipment that you have, it's the culture of the school and the vigilance of the staff that they have. When you visit a school, there is only one entrance for you. So when you approach the front entrance, you should see signage explaining to you how to enter the building. You have to press a button, somebody should ask you what is your business here. So once that person is deemed okay to come in, they're here for a legitimate reason, they allow them in and they tell them that they need to come into the front office. So once they go into the front office, they are asked to present their driver's license and they have to put that through our visitor management system which our system checks to make sure that you're allowed to be on school board property. Um, it checks you against the National Sex Offender Registry. So once you've been cleared through that, you're also asked to sign in on a sign-in log. And then once um, they get cleared through the visitor management system, a yellow visitor sticker prints out, and then they're asked to put that on, and then they're able to go wherever it is they need to go. Being an educator here in the county for 11 years, I've always felt like safety was the number one priority for our schools and they've always been wonderful with their communication, their accessibility, and also their feedback. A safety audit is when a team of people go into a school and there are 15 parts that we look at. So a large team goes in and we spend an entire day there. Our team actually starts as early as 645. The reason why we get there so early is because they look, they do a light study, so they want to look at the exterior lighting to make sure that it's appropriate and that it's working correctly. And then the rest of the team gets there and when we get there, we look at student arrival and then we do a, an administrative interview. We're constantly, constantly um, increasing communication. About and we have a team comprised of somebody from fire, from police, from CNM, retired principals. And we carry our radio pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. yes. and that's about an hour and 15 minute interview and then right after that we go through a drill. And we very closely observe their drill practices and of course the fire marshal is instrumental in giving advice. When they evacuate, the teachers know what zone they evacuate to and then they report to their zone leader stating yes I have all my students and then there's a facilitator who records all this information and then that person is also checking to make sure they're accounting for visitors so that's why the visitor log is so important. We were successful in our audit because of the things that we had put in place prior to our audit being conducted and, and so being here and from a different county, I feel like the priority here in Henrico County Public Schools is safety. Our school security officers, they work for the school system and their main assignment is to enforce the code of conduct. So they work in partnership with the administration and the dean of students at the school to build rapports with students and just to Make sure students, you know, if they're having any type of behavior issues, they help with that, but they also ensure doors are secure. They look at the parking lot, making sure that that area is all clean and being maintained properly and students aren't trying to skip, things like that. Fortunately, this year, we came across a resume for Christopher James and it has been an outstanding experience. Uh, Mr. James comes to us from a background in the um, juvenile justice department as well as criminal, criminal justice and went from his interview. His main goal was to deter students from going that route. And that struck a chord with me during the interview, and he's been outstanding since then. Um, his number one thing with coming in was building a relationship with students, and he hit the ground running, and it has been an awesome experience every day since he's arrived on campus. So all of our high schools have school resource officers there in the building every day, and then our middle school and elementary schools have our school resource officers as liaison. So anything regarding the law, the SROs handle, and they work again in partnership with the school security officers and the administration. The first thing people think about for school safety is the physical safety. And while that's so important to us, we really think the emotional well-being of the kids is a huge contributing factor to school safety. Number one, we want all kids to feel welcome and supported and connected to a caring adult. And a lot of times that caring adult could be the school counselor. School counselors provide awareness and education for teachers, parents, and for students for mental health issues. School-based mental health services are beneficial to students. We are able to place a psychologist and a social worker or a behavioral support facilitator um, in a selected school where they're able to offer individual and group 
Counseling Services, they're able to consult with parents and teachers and administrators to help identify and treat the mental health needs of the students. Mental health professionals in the buildings are able to support teachers in providing professional development so that they can um, learn more about dealing with students who have social and emotional challenges. Um, in addition, those um, mental health professionals can consult with teachers, encourage their own self-care initiatives, um, and teach them about the importance of wellness in their lifestyles. Right.